So now we're into the into form and chemistry. So when you eat these, the body can't use form. Cells can only use energy. So now the body has to use enzymes to break down what it had to for nature had to form. Now it's got to break it back down. So digestion is the number one phase of your body's cycle in terms of a food processor, an enzymatic process pancreatically given. So if your pancreas has problems, you're going to get a uh, gassy, bloaty, undigested foods. Now you can get that uh, gassy, bloaty with sulfur problems. But if you get gassy, bloaty with everything you eat, you're not breaking down your food properly. So you're, you're, you're getting fermentation and hopefully you're not on proteins getting putrefaction. <coughs> Excuse me. So you've got to break all this back down to the simple structures, at least as simple as it, it, it needs to get that electrical unique individual electrical component from it, because every individual constituent has a uniqueness to itself and a different part of the body always needs those different electrical uh, consciousnesses. It's just it's just the way it is. So now you've, you've, you've got a pancreatic weakness genetically. Oh my God, I'm not breaking down my foods properly. Well, you, you, that's like having the Kentucky Derby, a horse race. The horses take off, the gate opens, the horses take off, and your falls right there. You're done right there in the water. If you don't break down your foods apart, you're done right there trying to get healthy. Now, what about the gallbladder? Lipids. Hydrolyzes lipids. The gallbladder is actually a lymphatic organ. Now, What's the second stage of a food processing of a human body? Well, once you break things apart, what do you got to do now? Because you're still on the outside down this canal. You're still on the outside, believe it or not. You got to get to the inside. So you got absorption. Now, so you got the small bowel, which is your predominant absorptive organ. Then you got the colon, which is about five feet. The small bowel is about 22 feet. Most of your absorption is a small bowel, maybe some micro traces, some traces maybe in the colon up at the beginning portion. But uh, so what could what, what what's this made of cells? Yeah, OK, I got that cells, cells, cells. So the body is cells, spaces and two fluids, cells, spaces, two fluids, bowel, cells, spaces, two fluids, liver, cells, spaces, two fluids, heart, cells, spaces, two fluids, lung, cells, spaces, two fluids, bronchi, cells, spaces, two fluids broken record. So would the condition of those interstitial or those spaces around the cells play a role in absorption into either blood or lymphatic vessels? Well, heck yeah. So this is what we see. As, as you start getting congested from the food, especially the acid forming foods, which causes the mucosa to release mucus, all this lymphatic mucus and all this lymphatic stagnation, of course, through the generations, this, this, these acid foods have damaged the kidneys. That's what damages kidneys are the acid foods. Proteins are the most damaging to kidneys of all the food sources there is out there. Bar none. Bar none. Try having kidney pain. Go on a fruit for a day or two. I told you about that medical doctor and then go back and have a piece of meat and see what you do. If you don't go back down on your knees. Uh, -uh. you don't you don't eat protein when you're in pain. That's nitrogen that, that that'll inspire more pain. Uh, uh, that's not, you don't want to eat acid pain. Pain's an acid experience to begin with. You want to have more acids. You're in pain. We'll just give you more chemo. Oh, the thing is, the thing is a killing machine. And thank God you guys are waking up to that. So now with all the lymphatic stagnation from the kidneys and stuff, now we have malabsorption. And I do, you know, the iris work. I do all your eyes. And my God, everybody's malabsorbed to one level or another. So malabsorption is a lymphatic problem. All right. I get that. OK, good. We get the kidneys filtering. We start moving that lymph. We use the GI broom, which sucks on that mucus to pull it out of there. And we start inspiring health of cells. We start getting strong, right? Well, what creates good peristalsis? The nervous system, the autonomic. Where's that tied to? 
the adrenal glands. Neurotransmitters from the adrenal glands runs the autonomic. Well, wait a minute, I've got kidney problems, now I've got adrenals on top, so they're down, so my nervous system down, and I got I can't poop, I got constipation. Neurological. So again, as we're fixing kidneys, adrenals, and we're fixing everything, we're cleaning those interstitial spaces out, you get more absorption of nutrients. Okay, good. Now, wait a minute. How come that pancreas had genetic weaknesses in it in the first place? Ah, my mom gave it to me. Oh, that's good. Well, mom, you had pancreatic weaknesses. How'd you get it? Ah, my mom had it. Ah, how'd she get it? Oh, Granny, she ate a lot of meat, and she was she, she was a meat and potato lady. And uh, in older years, she had pancreatic cancer. So, this starts with diet always. If you can regenerate the cell with diet, you did regenerate the cell with diet, right? Right. Because there's nothing else you do with interfacing chemistry is breathing, eating, things like that, right? That's all chemistry. Can't get away from it. 